In this video, I go over the three phases of my biggest struggle with shooting in my first year, and that's accuracy. If you watched my previous video, the item I struggled most was with accuracy. Now, as I went and looked back at this journey, I learned that I went through three distinct phases of developing my accuracy. And what I wanna share with you is some of the pitfalls I had and then some of the drills I did to improve it. Now, before I really dive into all these specifics, I really need to stop and tell you what I mean by accuracy. When we think pistols and we think of accuracy, we're thinking the B8 bullseye and hitting dead set in the metal and having a group that follows it. That's not what we mean with action pistol. Don't want to confuse accuracy with precision. Now, accuracy is where you want the bolt to go. The general direction of where you intended to go, does it go there? Precision is when you start to tighten that group. Now, when I'm talking about accuracy for what I do, I'm implying the amount of hits I get in the A zone or the down zero zone on an IDPA target. So with that said, I don't need to be accurate on one. I need to be accurate on at least anywhere from a stage of 18 rounds all the way up to 32. And so my accuracy is an aggregate between that with a good time. And so when I refer to this being about accuracy at speed, it's being able to hit these ideal zones while maintaining a low time. So what I really struggled with in the beginning was with double taps. So I could have the first shot go where I wanted it to, but because I was developing both a grip and a general sense of where I needed this gun to be in the beginning, I struggled with my second shot. Either it'd be very low or it wouldn't even be on the target at all. With that said, as I went and looked back at my notes, I noticed that I had three distinct phases I went through. And phase one is, what in the world is going on? So in this phase, I was new to shooting, I was new to the game, and I just wanted to be as safe as possible. And I spent a long time dry firing to develop my grip, along with all the other fundamentals, which were sight picture, sight alignment, and trigger prep. But I was really frustrated with where I was placing shots. I would say that'd be a great shot, only to find out that the shot was off to the right or sometimes off the left. And I literally would look dead smack in the middle. I then remembered I'm cross-eyed dominant. So briefly, if you don't know what that is, that's when your shooting hand and your dominant eye is opposite. And so once I was aware of that, I was able to make some adjustments to actually understand where I need to have my placement. It got me to a point to handle the gun to where I felt confident placing shots where I needed to. As I got better, I moved that shot out to seven yards. Then I went out to 10, 15, and to this day, I actually begin my warmups at 25 yards. Now, in my second phase, I call it tactical should make me cooler. The reason for that is because I did kind of the cardinal sin of shooter development, which was I tried to make my equipment make up for my deficiencies. And how I would do that is I would play with trigger spring weight. With recoil springs, I even added weight to the gun, a weapon mounted light, you think of it, I've tried it. And so adding this equipment, as, as goofy as it is, made me feel a little bit more comfortable. Did it make me a better shooter? No. There was one piece of equipment in this phase that elevated my understanding of shooting fundamentals and accurately, and that was the addition of a red dot. The biggest benefit of the red dot is it gives you information real time, and it's very simple to understand. What you should have in an ideal situation is that this dot, and let's say this is the top of the window, should not extend out of it. It also can tell you left and right. In my case, because I'm a right-handed shooter, if the dot went left, I knew I had a grip problem. If the dot went right, I knew I probably pulled the trigger too hard or something within my trigger prep. Now, if the dot went down, I knew that was an anticipation issue on my part, but I was aware of it at that point. 
So what the red dot taught me was how to call shots. Today, I'm comfortable calling shots up to about 25 yards on my carry optics setup. So with that said, is tactical making me cool help me out? Yeah, only what with one piece, which was the red dot. That helped me learn the fundamentals at an accelerated pace, and now I fully understood what a good shot felt like. So, and this leads to phase three and about where I'm at today, now we're talking. The big jump for me in this phase was locking my wrist. I was such a brute at gripping the gun, both with my weak hand and my strong hand, that I didn't even think to lock my wrist. Once I understood locking my wrist, I also had to understand not manhandling the gun. I mentioned that very briefly in my first video, but essentially I was pulling the gun down on the second shot. And so the end result with that was that I'd get a low second shot. And so once I understood that recoil management should be just that, recoil management, not recoil aggression, it only became a matter of timing at different ranges to understand at what speeds and splits I could push this at it. Those were my three distinct phases of development with accuracy. Now I'm gonna share some drills with you that I do to help improve accuracy going forward and some things you can take along with you. But before I do that, I wanna discuss this beautiful relationship if you made it this far in this video. And if you have, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe because I will be coming out with more content for you to enjoy and perhaps make fun. Right. Did you wreck your slide? I did. <laughs> I did that one day. Larry's like, look, make radio. So I got to check in my butt. I'll load it. I forgot. Are you ready? Right? Yep. Stand by. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Right before I filmed this video, I was speaking with a new shooter at a local match I was at, and he was asking me, hey, what do you think I should work on being a new shooter? Should I work on double taps or should I work on transitions? I said, oh, without a doubt, you need to work on your double taps because that's your foundation. That, that's everything from your grip, your trigger discipline, and your sights. But what I really want to emphasize is really working on one component. And in this case, it's double taps. So start there and then you start to add to it. Now that you're comfortable with double tabs, you can work on transitions. Let's say you're a little further down this journey. Really begin to understand what you're deficient at. It's obvious in what we do in Action Pistol. Start to write these notes down. When you go back and reflect on that, you can start to isolate that component and develop it. As you start to go along, you need to verify that things are going along well. I actually prefer to practice with steel. Being a millennial, instant gratification is something I live and breathe by. If I'm working on doubles, I may use a smaller circle, preferably around eight or 10 inches, um, sometimes they're 12, and I'm looking at where those spots land. If I'm working on a transition, I might use a plate rack because that teaches me to kind of keep a good steady pace and have good sight trigger and discipline going into one spot to another. Now, let's say your range does not have the option of steel. You can shoot paper targets. Now, the one thing I want to challenge you with right away, don't shoot and practice on a big giant wide open target. Mix it up. Put some tuxedos in there, some no shoots. If you ever see me practice on some of the videos I share on my Instagram, you'll see that I'm shooting at some sort of different type of paper target, whether that's a tuxedo, something with a partial, anything to make it more technically different and focus on placing my rounds where I want them to go. One thing I've gained value out of lately is doing the Instagram drills. Every once in a while, I will do something funny like a build drill. The build drill at the end of the day is a great check to see where your fundamentals are. Accuracy is obviously the pinnacle and fundamental of pistol shooting. If you develop this well, you'll have no choice but to go fast. So until then, get more accurate, have more fun, and we'll see you at the range.